Hey everyone, so <clears throat> sorry you're always the test subjects when these things start, but let me know. How's the audio? Is my microphone in frame? It is. Microphone. So I have my fan on and I have the window open and it's raining. So if you can hear any of that feedback and you don't like it, let me know. And I can talk more into the mic. We're gonna do a little bit of a, a little bit of clerical right here and let the Instagram people know that we are live. Because I do not mind that some people don't have Twitter. I don't mind that at all. <laughs> That's how I pose. <laughs> if this is too close so this is the first live stream where i have figured out how to make my camera hd before my camera was not it was like four by four old school tv but i recently bought a new it's just like a router extension my my internet is not better but now i have this little like glade plug-in of like a router extension that I think helps with these streams a little bit. It was either that or change my internet provider. So I didn't do that because that seems troublesome. Um, so I wanted to get on live just to talk to you guys, maybe have like a more, you know, one-on-one -on -one kind of Q&A with everybody. I've been a little MIA. Um, we we went to the Poconos this weekend, and then like the world took a dump. And I feel like I've been that episode of South Park where Stan's mom can't leave the house because she's hooked on the twenty four hour news cycle. So that's kind of how I've been. So. I haven't posted anything this week. I get this like inner monologue that's like, don't force any content because force content is ugly. But then I'm like, but I must make videos. So today I was actually going to uh, make this lookbook that I've been working on, like film some of the shots for it. And then I got a thunderstorm warning and like five minutes later it started pouring and it's been pouring since. So. Ethan is in the hallway. I actually had the door open for a little bit while I was setting up in case any visitors wanted to come in and to like let the AC in a little bit before I closed the door. And no cats decided to be in here. They're actually laying in the tub. I think the tub is like very cold and the cats all lay in it, like an empty tub. So that's what they're doing. Um. My vacation went pretty good. I guess you can call it a vacation. Kind of just like we just went like three hours from here <laughs> and did stuff three hours away. And I ran into a subscriber while I was there, which was actually really fun. And I, I really liked it. <laughs> And she sent me the picture. I thought it looked really cute. So you can always uh, stop me and say hi if you want. I never ever mind. Not on vacation, not ever. And it was cool to like 
go a couple hours away and like I was relaxed and chill so it was just nice to run into somebody we ended up talking for like 30 minutes but oh shout out from no libs hey have you been to that northern liberties piazza park i was talking to one of the owners who has a like storage container like pop-up restaurant there and he says that he hates it i won't say who it is but we got into a long talk because i love talking about like trends and civics and why or why not that restaurant might be good or bad so the second he wanted to talk to me about it i was like i know i was quiet before but Yeah, so Rose Tattoo moved locations. I've actually been in the know on all of that for a long time, but they only moved like a block down the street. So I felt like I didn't have to tell you guys or make a big deal out of it. And like the beauty of Mark Cross, the owner of Rose Tattoo, the beauty of Mark is just like, the ideas that come to him and how organically they just fall into his brain. So I've been to the new Rose location while it's been under construction and took a little tour of it and it was really, really exciting. So I really like it. Um, I believe it's more space. So Mark was trying to figure out what he wanted to do with Rose if he wanted to have the current location and buy the upstairs and you know build a staircase between the stairs and rent both the first and second floor and create more space that way but mark said that what's so great about his shop is everybody's in one space and i totally agree so he didn't want to split anybody up like via two floors so this shop is just more accommodating of the space i haven't been tattooed in it yet i've only seen it as a construction site so i'm pretty excited to check it out i've been like trying to make an excuse to go to new york i've been talking to akira about like making plans to go there but if i'm not getting tattooed and i'm not spending the night i don't really know what i would do there i know i can just like hop on the bus and maybe like just play Animal Crossing and end up in New York and like that sounds fun but I don't know I uh I feel bad that I haven't been there yet but I was there a couple weeks ago um and Akira is coming to Philadelphia to tattoo as a guest spot so I'm pretty excited about that asked if I could be his assistant and he said yes so we'll see how that pans out I missed one of these questions Waiting to hear thunder on stream. I've been to the pod park. It needs more shade. That's definitely what he said. I heard there's no music either. I just got tattooed by Jessie Preston when she was in New York last year and she was mentioning coming back in September. Would you get tattooed by her again? So I, I want to get tattooed by Jessie so, so, so bad. And I've never been tattooed by Akira. I have, so I really want to get some tattoo removal. And I recently watched a documentary on Amazon Prime called dinked d inked d apostrophe inked and so i was watching dinked and it's all about these people who are getting tattoo removal some of it seems really brutal in the documentary i felt like it wasn't a parallel experience to the tattoo removal i've had but i it was cool to watch that documentary. At first it was weird and I wasn't sure what I was watching, but as the documentary progresses, it kind of shows the lives of a few different characters. The documentary essentially follows 
one guy's tattoo removal journey, which it needs to, to like be an anchor for a strong documentary. And then it talks to some other people who talk about their tattoo removal. Like this one woman said like every time she saw a picture of herself, she would only look at her bad tattoo, but she was still getting tattooed. It was just like one bad tattoo she didn't like. And then there was another girl who said, you know, she got tattoos to be rebellious, to be like, fuck you. And then she just didn't feel that way anymore. So she was like seeking removal. So that documentary um, kind of aligned with how I've been feeling with some of my tattoos. So I feel like getting some removal would make me feel better. And it also watching that documentary kind of affirmed how I felt because I have some really, really good tattoos. And sometimes I get this feeling like, oh, I have too many tattoos. Like, when I wear this shirt, sometimes I feel like it's a little jarring to just, like, show up at the grocery store. And I'm like, uh, do you need tomatoes? But then other times, I mean, you talk to other people and you talk to people who are getting removal or watch documentary of people seeking removal and it just feels a little more affirming so I feel like I want to seek some removal and then get tattooed by either Akira or Jesse Preston um I thought the one on your arm was from Akira so I've actually never been tattooed by Akira we're just um friends I met Akira at tattoo convention a couple years ago And then we just, like, I bought a print from him and then followed him on Instagram because I just seen his stuff at Tattoo Convention and really, really liked it. Just, like, very organically like that. And then later that year, Akira started working at Rose and Rose Tattoo is just where I get all my tattoos. So from there, like, our relationship was, like, permanent. (laughs) But I've never been tattooed by him. I'm just, like, I bought one of his prints, and then he's also gifted me, like, a variety of his prints as well. Did you change your hair? Did it just fade? So, it... I've washed it three times since I've done it, and the very first time I washed it, it faded completely to, like, just nothing. So, I dyed it again with a like just a touch different formula with much more yellow just because I felt like the yellow had like a really strong ability to stain and it did stain my hands so I was like okay I think the yellow is much stronger than the orange just the way it's produced so I did yellow with like a touch of orange and then this is it and then I went to a water park with like a lot of chlorine washed it after the water park and this is what it looks like now um if you have colored hair the trick to like not having your hair like completely go crazy in chlorine is to rinse your hair with cold water before you enter the water park or like a chlorine pool that way there's already water in your hair so like the chlorine isn't the only thing in your hair so your hair isn't just like drinking chlorine water there's that fresh water in your hair cuticle that kind of helps that's what I always do even with highlights with natural blonde because chlorine can dye your hair green so I always just rinse my hair with water first and it's good hygiene to rinse yourself before going into the water park but I'll tell you this so I went to an indoor water park in the Poconos and I went for like adult swim so 8 to 10 and there were just two kids in there anyway but all the staff was like goofing around and it was actually really fun because they let us get insane on some of the uh slides to a point where I got really hurt so I was like so I'm done I actually got really, really hurt at the water park. I'm wearing pants. I I can show you the bruises. They're insane. So, got really hurt at the water park. So, I was in the wave pool, which connected to, like, a basketball hoop. And there was just, like, a little girl there. And she was like... So, I was like, hey. And I'd been drinking. 
and she like passed me the basketball like and i thought it was I, i was like really into it i was like am i connecting with the youth right now so i tried to dunk it and i'm no good so then i passed it to her and she like got it right away so we were playing back and forth a little bit and there's these lily pads at the water park and you try to like and there's a rope and you hold onto the rope and you try to like get across the lily pads without falling it's like pretty hard because they're all wet and like slimy and gross because it's like i don't know tourism in the poconos is like extremely failing it's like a dead water park dead mall dead water park everything good for me so for this adult swim there was only like five other people in the water park total and which i think is why they just let those kids be there because their mom was there so i'm playing basketball with this little girl and being pretty terrible at it so i was like you want to go on the lily pads and she was like yeah but my brother my brother is good at the lily pads i'm not so she went to get him and he had chicken pox i like so i didn't want to freak out but i've never had chicken pox so i saw this kid with chicken pox and like i wanted to be so cool with his little sister for some reason so he's like i'm gonna go across the lily pads and he cheats but i'm like all right so i go across the lily pads and i'm you know i'm okay at it then he goes and cheats and that's when i notice that he is covered in chicken pox and then to his sister who's like i don't think i'm good at it i'm like why don't you practice i gotta go i like oh my god i was so scared so at the water park they had this like it's like a a, like a wave and there's like a little uh, like porch there's like a little area right here and the wave comes underneath it and then kind of like stops up here it's just like a small hill and you like put a boogie board on the porch and then they push you into the wave and you can like ride and then like you fall off and whatever And, like, all the kids who work at the water park are really, really good at it. And because nobody goes there, all the kids at the water park just, like, do the wave thing until you come and ask to go on it. So, I would say at, like, Six Flags, the wait for this would be really, really long. So, there wouldn't be an opportunity for you to go 20 times in a row like I did. (laughs) You would just go, like, once. Um, so... I went and I was like on it and it threw me up above like where the water like goes back through the grate to filter through back to the beginning. It threw me up and then over and while it did that I like hit like knocked both of my knees on the grate because there was a space between like the grate and where the water flow goes and I just knocked both my knees and just like threw me in the air. And I just, like, flew backwards and slid, like, on my ass. Just, like, And initially, I'm just embarrassed because all the kids who work at the water park are so cool. And it's, like, adult swim, so everybody's chill. And, like, I don't, the boss went home for the day and stuff like that. Like, I, um... I went to the, like, food court thing. Not really. It's just, like, a, like, a sandbar, a food bar. And I went to order a beer. And the guy gave it to me. And then he's, like, we're technically closed. And I was, like, oh. (laughs) Like, no rules. So when I fell on my ass that hard, I, like, was, like, (laughs) And then I looked, and both of my knees are purple. I wonder how high I can get my pants up. I don't know if you can see it. I was just like, one, I don't know what the regulations are here because this is a failing park. (laughs) Um, And that is a kid and he is nine years old with chicken pox. And um, I just flew into the air. Like, I don't know if because all of the kids at the water park Like, maybe they had it turned up high because just they use it all day because there's no one in line. But 
<clears throat> I'll tell you one thing. My Osaka bathing suit is the perfect water park bathing suit because it has no cleavage. It goes all the way up to the neck. So when you're being thrown in the air from a simulated wave, no top comes up and no bottoms come down. It was like wearing, I don't know what surfers wear. It was so sick. But when I went to the water park um, and like got my ticket, I went, I had to wait like 25 minutes for adult swim. So I just waited because my ticket was like <laughs> a fraction of the price. So I was like, I'll wait, I'm cheap. So I walked past the security guard and when I like looked at him, he was looking up my bathing suit on his phone. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> sorry, best girl coming through. Ooh, Gabrielle. I have two DDR pads, let's play sometime. Oh my god. The drama with my DDR pads is so crazy right now. So, <laughs> I, so I got two DDR pads from Amazon and I bought my DDR game from like this retro gaming spot in Media, Pennsylvania. I, the retro gaming spot that I go to in media is so good. Highly recommend. The guy's really cool. And he kind of, like, adapts to you. Like, if you're just, like, chill gamer, just, like, I like Animal Crossing and Doobity Amiibos, he's like, yeah, sure. But if you go and you're like, I'm from Philly and the traffic sucks, he's like, yeah. That's my experience with him. I really like him. Um, so I ordered two DDR pads off of Amazon. And when I got them, the one worked for two games and then stopped. And the other one was, like, stuck on left arrow, just like, brrrr. So I'm, I've been trying to return them to Amazon for, like, the last week. And the seller says I have to contact the manufacturer whose website is, like, the domain is expired by, like, seven years. I'm like, bro, are these DDR pads manufactured in, like, 2006? Because they don't work. You know that. Um, I had to, I had to, con I was on the phone with Amazon twice today. So, let me look through here. I got pox before I was vaccinated, but I got out easy. My BF has a permanent scar on his face from it. So my childhood best friend Justine, she ha she and her sister both had chicken pox when I was a kid, and I always thought like I would go to like a chicken pox party and get chicken pox, but um, my mom kept me home. But Justine has chicken pox scar, and so did our friend Jess. I just like never had them, and then my mom got shingles a couple years ago, and she was like, "You can't come home. I have shingles." I was like, "What?" When was the last time I was home? In Canada, we all get vaccinated for the chicken pox. You only get it if you got it before kindergarten when they vaccinate you before school. Hmm. I love your live streams. They're one of my favorite things to have on while drawing because they're just like podcasts. Same with your Five Fact Fridays. Why don't you practice? Um, I've been thinking of starting a podcast, but I think that they're like, like really becoming mainstream. Like, um, I saw a commercial for a podcast while I was in the Poconos. I had cable, which was like. <laughs> Like, it was, it was a vacation, like, straight out of the 90s. I, like, watched cable, went to the Poconos, which used to be, like, a thriving vacation destination. But I saw a commercial for a podcast when I was watching cable. 
uh, Valonius TV and I talked about having a podcast together because I think we have like really good like camera chemistry. But we were just talking about the logistics of like having a podcast, like a remote podcast. I feel like we could look up really cheap flights and just like once every two months maybe like host one another. I don't know how difficult that would be. I'm completely for it. I feel like Valonius is like a long lost friend of mine, but I don't know. That's why I need to like consider a Patreon because I know like a lot of my favorite creators who have Patreons like do stuff like that. So something I need to think about. I've only been watching like internet comment etiquette for like the last two weeks. Um, so I feel like, um, I like this, I like what he does with his channel, but you should do a podcast with John. It would be tricky to do that, so I don't think I would, but I would love to have a podcast. It's funny, my local library just opened up this whole area of the library that's like you can talk in it and it's this whole like media connect to each other aspect of the library and they have these privacy rooms that are like you rent them out but they're free and I was like oh my god I could have a podcast here that would be so sick but just it's just another tough thing to keep up with I feel like like almost like H3H3 they kind of shifted and now they only do their podcast I just like I don't want to deplete all of my like brain resources I guess but I do like how um Jenna and Julian do it like once a week but they have each other so they like they're both like very creative and like um like naturally performative like people I fully support a quicken podcast should do a podcast with Rosie. Rosie and I have interesting like um like oppositional views on things, but we like really 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 get along, so it's pretty beautiful. Um we just celebrated Rosie's birthday on Monday, and it was my first time going to Korean barbecue. Because I was always under the impression that there wasn't a vegan option. And let me tell you, I ate so, so well. It was so interesting. So if you guys have never been to Korean barbecue, I think I... I hope I have pictures and I didn't just put them on my story. I keep doing stuff like that. And that's what I did. Okay, I have one picture. So if you've never been to Korean barbecue, you get set up on this table... And you can choose hot pot or barbecue. And the place we went to, it was almost like a little, like, karaoke lounge almost. We had a private room with a big table. It had, like, a big table in the middle. And built into the table were, like, two, like, in inlet barbecue things. Just, like, little hot surfaces. And then around the table were just, like, little hot plates. And you had to choose if you were going to be, like, team barbecue or team hot plate and sit on that side because you're not allowed to share food. And you pay $23 to get in and have, like, all you can eat. But you also can't waste anything because at the end of the meal, everything you didn't eat, they weighed. And then you were charged on how much food you wasted. So it was almost like a weird competition i was like scared i was like oh i don't want to order too much and break the bank um so i got hot pot and it's basically just like a pot of broth i asked for vegetarian broth so that i suspect was water they were like we don't do that i'm like just please don't put a bone in it so it's just like this metal pot that's on this little hot tray And this is like the little hot tray and this is my pot. And they brought out just plates of accoutrement. 
So there was this like photo book you could look through that had no prices because you just like everything is almost like you can eat as much as you want. And I'm sorry if I'm explaining this to you and it's like your culture and you're like, shut up. I just, I never explored it because I thought I couldn't eat it, but there was actually a lot to eat. So you have your little pot of just dead up broth and I ordered broccoli, taro, pumpkin, spinach, and corn. And all the other people who were like team hot pot also got like crab and clams and like beef and stuff like that so you just oh and I got instant noodles so almost like a block of like dried ramen you put it in your hot pot and you can like turn up the heat did you see that lightning you can turn up the heat and it just cooks everything like a soup in front of you and then Rosie did barbecue so she was literally like cooking her little meat on top of this like little hot plate it was actually really really fun um to avoid the like surcharges of like weighing your food at the end everything left over we just like put in our hot pots and we were like now i'm full <laughs> it was it was really really fun though like eating pumpkin was so 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 good it was pretty i would say it was expensive but uh i like went into it i like went to the atm and i was like okay at the end of the meal i'm gonna offer to pay for rosie and that was like what i was gonna do and then um, when we got the check, Rosie showed her ID and they gave her her bowl, her like barbecue seat for free. I was like, she didn't even tell any of us that. I was like so prepared to be like, I got it. <laughs> um, so that was actually really sick. Like you went out to birthday dinner with your friend and they got it for free. And I went to a spot in Chinatown. So it, it was really, really sick. Um, your hair is looking so tight, by the way. Thank you. You can change your settings in IG so your stories automatically save to your gallery. Otherwise, they're on IG archive. Not sure. I think they're retrievable. They are. Um, after you update your phone. I remember when my friend passed away, someone was like, your photos save forever. But it was like a certain date they save. So after the update, which I'm sure was like two years ago at this point. Charlie was a sinner is a really good spot in Philly. I need to go there. My friend Jeffrey and I went there for like a huge smorgasbord because his friend worked there at the time. But I didn't like what we ordered. But it may just be isolated like the chef that night or whatever. I went to a Korean barbecue once for someone's birthday and everyone ate meat and I just sat there eating rice. Um, maybe not all Korean barbecue offer barbecue and hot pot, but the hot pot aspect is what made it so cool. The barbecue options for vegan were really, really, really limited. Um, Rosie checked beforehand that I would be able to eat there, so there might be places that don't offer the hot pot. Without the hot pot, I wouldn't have been able to eat, but it was so sick. I've been loving your new editing and video style lately. Are you going to continue to do adventure videos like the ones you've been doing recently? Thank you. Um, I would love to. Those are kind of like, I have video ideas all the time. I don't remember if you guys were there for that time. I was almost like brought on to James Charles creative team. And then like he went through that scandal a few weeks later. So I was like, I wasn't like, excuse me, Mr. Charles. We had an arrangement, but um, if you weren't a part of that, I, I have like so many creative ideas that I either like don't have a budget for or they don't make sense on my channel or like I would just need a camera person in order to achieve them. And sometimes those ideas just like go by the wayside, but other times I'm able to do them. So... 
as often as possible I want to make videos like that. Um, after... So the first episode of Cheesesteak Tour, which is a video I posted two weeks ago if you missed it. The first episode of Cheesesteak Tour, I actually didn't post. I might put it on my second channel, but it was just like so bad that afterwards I was able to save up and get like um, audio equipment. So that's what led to the rest of Cheesesteak Tour, which is now like in like a work in progress. And for me, like it's always like, do I contact the restaurant first? Do I just show up? I like filming Cheesesteak Tour with Rosie. So our schedule is lining up. So that's always like really fun, but I, I love to do it. And I would love like a couple more episodes under my belt so I can explore more. But I would love to like do more stuff around Philly, honestly. Seeing myself like being filmed has been a little tough because I'm used to controlling the camera and you just like naturally like point the camera in a way that is aesthetic to you. So it's definitely interesting seeing myself on camera. I'm like, wow, no way. <laughs> but um, I do want to make more videos like that. And again, I should probably make a Patreon. I did create merch for Cheesesteak Tour. And that merch directly just goes back into Cheesesteak Tour. I am making merch through Teespring, which is a little bit of a learning curve. At first, Teespring put my entire like stop shop under review, so I was like, "Fuck!" But uh, now it's clear, and I just ordered a shirt for myself today as well. So that's been cool. If I can generate like a little bit of buzz that way, I think that would be really cool. And just like making videos where I'm eating, a little vulnerable, but something I'm really interested in. I love doing Philly stuff. And I want the Philly stuff to be, like, good and captivating and interesting, but, like, still show my personality. I think, like, the video, my bad luck video, like, I think what I really like about certain creators, like, like, Shane Dawson, like, I felt like my video had a little bit Shane Dawson vibes just because I was, like, going out there and, like, trying to show my audience that the thing I'm interested in is interesting. So that's what I was trying to do. I think it's just hard to get people to click on videos where they're not sure like what's in it for them so they won't click on it. And I'm a viewer that way as well. So just figuring out creative ways to get my audience to click on these new videos has been tough for me. Um, Valonius and I kind of like talk about that a little bit and love him to death. I do think sometimes I, like, I get very influenced by him, so I have to, like, stay true to myself while also getting advice from him. So just, like, getting advice from Cheesesteak Tour and, like, the Bad Luck video has been, like, a little hard because I'm like, how do I get my viewers to click on it? And he's like, put a picture of Belle Delphine in it. I'm like, no. <clears throat> Excuse me. I haven't talked to people all day. Your Philly content is everything, especially when I'm homesick and far away. Oh, thank you. I really just like, I really, I try to think about what I am like good at and what my passion is because like, I think being a creator is being true to yourself and just showing people what you're good at or what you like. And I really think like Philadelphia is one of those things. Like Philly is really unique and quirky and dangerous and old and weird and affordable and interesting and like my home. So if I could just show more videos, like I go to this place in No Libs in Northern Liberties called Soy Cafe. And I've gone to Soy Cafe, I would say at least every month for the last like four years. Like I have like, even like I had, to, I was making Ryan go there with me all the time. Like that's where I went 
and I've gone there all the time. And the, now, like, the owners, if they have a new thing on the menu, they literally tag me in it. They'll send me DMs that are like, there's a new menu item. Like, it's, it's really, really great. I went for Taco Tuesday for the first time, like, two weeks ago because they had been tagging me in Taco Tuesday for, like, the last, like, six months. And I was like, I can't believe I haven't gone. I feel so bad just, like, seeing this tag and being like, eh, I'm busy. <laughs> um, so I finally went. And when we went, the owner, like, especially prepared our plate, brought it out to our table, and even gave us free samples of this, like, handmade vegan ice cream she's been making and just like asked us how we felt about it and I just like could have cried because it was like it's like being a part of a community that trusts you like going to soy cafe they trust that I'm their customer but they also like have told me that they watch my videos or like have told me they like my Instagram pictures or like like my hair or like went out of their way to be like I like your shirt and all of that just makes me feel like super super welcomed in their space so just like being a responsible enough creator that they like treat me well when I go in and I know it's like out of a mutual it's just like really really nice so that being said those connections that I feel like I make with like people in Philadelphia I would love to turn into something, you know what I mean? The duality is I also just like like to be silly. And I also like like to do fashion and I like to do beauty videos sometimes. So it's hard to like give my channel up to a certain direction because I'm not like willing to lose the other stuff. And that's what like is so tough. And that's the like tough tough thing I have when I'm like bouncing ideas off of Valonius because I'm like oh I want to make a beauty video and I'm filming a lookbook and then I have to go because I'm filming a cheesesteak video and then I have to make a tattoo video and he's like stop it so that's what's tough like keeping all of those things active on one channel and you guys know that like YouTube wants you to focus on just one thing so that's what's tough because I I, like, can't convince my audience to watch everything. And I don't blame you guys. Like, it's definitely hard for some of you to, like, click on one of my beauty videos. Or, like, click on a fashion video. But then I get really hyped because people are like, I like your fashion sense. And I'm like, oh, cool. So it's, it's tough. But then you know your core audience will trust you. So it's just, like, getting the people who trust you and trust like your vision or trust your ideas to click on those videos because a lot of people won't watch a video unless it has views already they don't want to waste their time and i don't blame i don't blame anybody you know i wouldn't want to waste my time either like i'm so it's almost tough to pick up a new youtuber because you're like i don't want to waste my time i watched I watched this one YouTuber who recommended a bunch of YouTubers earlier and I started to watch a few of them and then one already like just like said a word I don't like and I was like oh my god I can't believe I like watched three of their videos and this is when I found out they were like this you know what I mean which I'm like usually it was the context of it that I didn't like but you know what I mean did you get your roof fixed? Yes. Just in time for like my uh, my office redo. Um, the light in my alleyway just went out. That's pretty weird. I have other... Nope, that didn't add anything. I have like overhead lights. I don't think you can tell the difference. I feel that I want to just put what I want on my tiny channel. I'm a paleontologist, so I need dinosaurs, but I also want to do more typical non-science stuff. It's tough, and it's especially intimidating when you see other content creators do it so flawlessly. And a thought that I had earlier was sometimes I get online and I see people who have a good idea, and it like 
it challenges me so much. I'm like, how did they have such a good idea? Like, they are a genius. I say that so much. I'm like, that's genius. Like, he's a genius. They're a genius. Like, that's so smart. And it's especially like, like TikTok. Sometimes I think there's so much genius in some of the like um, comedy sketches that happen in a second. Or like someone says something really, really just funny or smart um, on Twitter. Sometimes I'll see little tweets that are like five words that are so like hilarious and thoughtful and smart with just like four words. I'm like, I can't believe that some people are so smart and quick and witty and it's very intimidating. And sometimes I'm like, I should get off the internet because I'm like doubting myself so much because I'm like, oh my God, I'm not smart. I'm not funnier than an, an, a current 18 year old. You know what I mean? So I, it's definitely tough. I'll see like hair looks or makeup looks that are like, but last night I was at the supermarket and I picked up a Vogue, like Vogue magazine. Cause I was like, oh, magazines are probably dead. And there was some stuff in the magazine that was like still inspiring. So I'm almost like, should I read magazines so I can be inspired by something flat that like is only interpretive? It's not interactive in a way that if you're seeing something online, you can interact with it by talking to the person or reading the comments. Like if the person is like unreachable because they're like famous or whatever, you can still interact almost in the comments and they almost like shift your perspective. But a magazine is not interactive. It's only interpretive. And the only person who can interpret it is you. Unless your friend is over. So for me, it was almost like I feel like I should like read this magazine. Because I've been having such a tough time lately. Like just figuring out like where I belong and everything. Without being intimidated and without feeling like I'm not like faster than like a gen z or something like that um but that's just like a shower thought oh wait hold up you have a tiktok actually i don't uh my <laughs> my username is taken both of my like usernames that i would use are taken so i didn't make one and same with twitch quicken and quiet cool kid are both taken I have this other app, it's called Firework, where it's like 30 second videos instead of, I guess TikTok is 15. I'm thinking about creating content on there, but I'm not sure. I don't know literally one other person on it. Office Redo coming soon? It's coming very soon. I think like on the 13th is when you can like get ready for it. But, um, soon, very soon, and it's gonna be huge, and I'm so, so, so excited because, like, I've been giving you guys, like, kind of glimpses of it, but I really want to, like, talk about it long form, like, how it's kind of cr changed my creative process. It's been really, really nice. So, Michaela in the super chat has said, tips fedora, milady. Thank you. I like that spelling of Michaela. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. One thing I've been wanting to look up like all week is why we clear our throat. Because when I was in the Poconos, I was breathing so well. I was like, I have to move here. I have to just move to this remote mountain town and hope they have high-speed internet and just make YouTube content here. Your person, everyone has multiple interests. It's so weird that YouTube doesn't get that by and emphasizing putting the same kind of videos out. It's true. It's, it's definitely tough because so many people can be on YouTube so you can create like the same format video all the time and that's when people expect and like i fall into it too like the internet comment etiquette he makes the same kind of form format video 
and it's so so good that you learn to expect it and then you can like binge almost like Netflix all of his videos but if you sat down to watch my channel and you were introduced to it for the first time it just might be more difficult you might like go through all my tattoo talk Tuesdays and then be like well what's this other stuff you would have to put trust in me that my other stuff might be something that you're interested in and I think that's tough it's definitely a lot harder for your audience to trust you I think there's been like a lot of people who have been disappointed by like their favorite online creator so that trust is a little harder to earn I would say these days I don't know why I did a money symbol but just like <laughs> do you trust me I'm 24 and I feel that way too. I feel the need to catch up sometimes and be like, whoa, the kids are wild these days. I mean, it's it's totally true. Like, we had to learn how to, like, navigate the internet, whereas they are arriving on the internet already navigated, I would say. Um, so that advantage or that structure is already there. Just that natural ability is there. Um... So, I, I don't know. It's definitely interesting. I come back to your channel for the cats. <laughs> Are you still doing a plant styling video? Yes, it's in the works. My neighbor is getting a third story put on her house and the people threw a bunch of bricks in my backyard and smashed one of my planners. Um, I talked to the like project manager and before I even like explain myself he's like oh we'll replace it I'll replace it for you I'll get you a new one and I was like you didn't even ask me what it looked like it, it's from Umbra it's expensive <laughs> so that is where that video is Sorry, I'm reading the chat here. Super offhand question, but does John have tattoos? My fiance has none and I have full sleeves and sometimes I feel weird about our dynamic. Um, it's funny that you say that because normally I don't care at all. But then if we are like this weekend in the Poconos, and I know like some people hate when I say stuff like this, but it's just absolutely true. And I just am not making it up at all. And it is 100% my organic perspective and not like a snowflake perspective. I'm being defensive, but what I'm about to say is, you know, when I'm in the Poconos, I do feel a little like under a spotlight being very tattooed. And it is because, you know, it's in a rural place it's in a pl like a place that some people do go to vacation and you know being able to vacation is just like I don't know like people want to relax and maybe seeing a tattooed person like disrupts it in some way like I'm not sure but you know in the water park or just like walking around the local supermarket that has maybe soy milk only like it just feels a little nerve-wracking and sometimes you know it would be nice if John was tattooed so I wasn't just like all alone like sometimes I really really feel all alone and that feeling could only be shared by another tattooed person or I mean John is pretty just 100% regular looking but like when I go out to eat with Morgan Joyce it's like I don't know it's like it's just like hot girl summer it's just like us tattooed all this food hot wings messy and we're just like it just feels like we're bawling out because we're both tattooed and just like we have each other and it just feels like i don't want to say two celebrities because that could be misconstrued but just like two fucking chicks just like two people who just like have it all figured out and i feel like if i was like 
running through that rural supermarket with someone like her, like my equal who's silly and just like willing to be different and used to being different, it would just feel better or just like a team. And when it's just John, no tattoos, regular ass guy, it's just me and I feel weird. Like we went to the supermarket and it was like a Friday night in the Poconos. Um, there's nowhere for me to eat, so we just get groceries. So the orange juice was like all the way in the back of the fridge. And it's like those fridge shelves, like supermarket fridge. So I stepped onto like the, the bottom part of it to reach up to get what I wanted all the way in the back. It was very quick, like very instinctual. Like, oh, I can't really reach. Let me like get a step up. And doing it just makes me seem like a creep because I have this big Playboy bunny tattoo and now my hair is orange and I'm just like doing something like mildly inappropriate. And uh, the audible gasp I heard from one lady walking by, she was like, ah! and I looked at her, she was like my age. I was like, if I was with Morgan, you would be like these crazy bitches and I would feel great. But because I was just with John, who's like, I'm like, God damn it. I feel like a freak. Um, and that was a feeling I had organically this weekend that sometimes I don't have. But I was like, if I was here with Morgan or like when I'm walking around with like Akira or something, I just like feel protected or just feel like not alone. So that sucks but like i don't wish he was tattooed in another sense but i also feel like there's just things he'll never ever be able to relate to me about and like that is disheartening <laughs> i'm not tattooed because i'm 17 but i dress relatively alternatively Having a group of other alternative friends makes me feel so much more secure. Yes, that's what I mean. Like, it just, it's just like all your buddies are together. It's fun. John is scary, maybe. I don't think you're being dramatic at all. I feel the same way going to nicer restaurants. It makes me feel so weirdly anxious because I hate, hate people looking at me and I feel like I stick out. Yes. So uh, for my birthday, we went to this really nice restaurant. It's called Veg in Philadelphia. It's really, really small foods. So it's not expensive in a way, but you're encouraged to order a ton of plates. So if you get five $10 plates, you know, and so does the person you're with. You're already at $100, so it becomes very expensive. And you need a reservation. So I got dolled up to go. And I just had the same thought. Like, if Morgan and I were here just, like, 100% looking our best, I would just feel, like, rich and sophisticated and just, like, badass. But I, didn't, I just I felt a little out of place being alone and tattooed there. Hi, quick and much love. I'm also in this thunderstorm. It's pretty insane right now. Yeah. The sky right now is like creamsicle orange. It's like very pleasing. I wonder if you guys can see it. Isn't that like pretty crazy? If you want a baby spider plant, I have like 60. I've been giving them away. DM me. Oh, I will. I really want that. Oh my god. 
How do I deal with the desire of wanting to support local tattoo artists, but also having fears that there are better artists out there who could do it better? Instagram really plays a role in this. This is too... This is too, too true to, like, my whole life. So, I, I really only want to get tattooed at, like, Rose Tattoo. So, it's a little, I feel bad because I'm not getting tattooed in Philly, which in, like, the last five or six years has taken on some really amazing artists who I've just, like, completely missed out on. But then you also miss out on that, like, local sense and you know if you're around town or whatever it's nice to get tattooed by locals because it like connects you with other people so i definitely constantly feel bad that i'm not getting tattooed by locals especially because they're pretty good and i do feel like if people know who i am they're like oh she's not getting tattooed by us um, I mean, that could be just, like, be in my head. But it's something I do feel bad about. And then I do feel bad that I'm not getting tattooed by, like, people around the world as well. I don't know what to do about it, but it's definitely a feeling I have as well. It makes me feel pretty bad. <laughs> but, yeah, it's definitely, like, the role of Instagram. And it's tough, especially when you're, like, buds or have, like, a back and forth with a tattoo artist. Like, there's a couple tattoo artists in Philly who, like, I'll reply to their story sometimes. And then I'm like, I don't get tattooed by you. I feel so bad. I need this live stream right now. Thank you. I, I really needed it, too. Like, to be honest, I've just been, like, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, not wanting to push myself creatively, like, not put out something just to put it out. I have, like, a couple ideas right now that I've been working on, but I've also been, like, I don't know, just, like, really fucked up on the news right now, and I kind of stopped myself from talking about politics online just for, like, my safety and, like, the safety of my loved ones and the people who I communicate with. And even that, I feel like, is a little bit of unpopular opinion, but it puts me in a better headspace because I think politics are so challenged online, and I do not accept the challenge. Um, I think I did a lot of, like, healthy debating when I was on Tumblr, and went to the coffee shop with friends and we would have healthy conversations about things. But I think now it's so polarizing and it's so black and white that the enjoyment I used to have, like having these healthy debates or conversations with people, like I don't have anymore. I just feel like very fight or flight. And I just like don't put those feelings out there anymore. Like you can spend time with me or like, I don't know, just get from my vibe that I stand for the right thing, but it's just not something I do, and it's 100% for my personal safety and my personal well-being, and even I, uh, I, like, it took me a long time to get to that standpoint because I felt like it was my responsibility as, like, a person with a platform, and I'll see things that are, like, fuck anyone with a platform who doesn't like stand up and blah 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 and I was very manipulated by that mindset for a long time and I think that like I said it it manipulated me to speak outside of my comfort zone and it wasn't something I was actually willing to do because it really upset me it took a lot out of me and like I said it it put me at risk online because it's just like my politics aren't a hill I'm willing to die on you know I'd rather my content speak for me and not my politics so it took me a while to get over that like if you have a platform you should do this like if I go to protests from like I have posted about it like on snapchat before but now I don't like it's all really private I don't want to like reveal 
where my location would be in that kind of circumstance or whatever. All of that stuff just really private. And although you may read something online that you feel like you might agree with, it's always tough because you're reading it as you're reading it as dialogue. You're reading it as first person. And it's a tweet, so it's conversational. So you're reading something like someone is talking to you and you're hearing it in your own narrative, so it hits you directly. So all of those like things online, although they're written from by people our age and they're written by people who you know have a, like a, a fair intention, for me, I was just like, actually, even though I have a platform, I don't think that I should speak about anything like this because one, it might skew someone's judgment and they might like me, so they might just agree with me. And that isn't totally fair um, because depending on where you live, depending on who you are, depending on your background, like there just might be nuances to your beliefs that are very specific to you that shouldn't be encouraged by me, you know? I live in a city, so there's just things that I need as a person who lives in a city that might be different from somebody who lives somewhere rurally, just for example. So, you know, the only thing I can do is when something really terrible is going on, I just like to be silent. I don't want my voice to show up anywhere. So this weekend, I just like was silent. I just, like, did not think it was appropriate to post anything. And that's kind of how I've been. I've been so sucked into the 24-hour news cycle that I haven't slept all week. Um, like, at all. <laughs> Which is pretty tough. Um, because by the time I do get to bed, it means I'm sleeping in, which I don't like to do. I like to wake up really early, so that's what I've been feeling. My my uncle lives in Texas, so I did text him. And that was just really tough cuz he's a teacher and he said like it just like really hit him hard, so that's tough. I'm just going to read some of the uh sidebar here for a second. Sorry about my nose. I feel lost in life right now. It's tough. I feel that way. Having a break from watching the news has been amazing for my mental health. Yeah, it it's another one of those things that I like read online that's like, it's your responsibility to be caught up on the news. So I'm 100% caught up on the news. And I also feel like people ask for it or not, I'm like a pop culture expert. I, like, stay completely caught up with pop culture at all times, <clears throat> which I feel like, you know, might be my responsibility as somebody who's online, but there's just not anything that goes by that I'm not, like, a, a little bit updated on. Like, sometimes I'm watching Philip DeFranco, which is, like, a, an online news kind of thing, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that happened. Oh, yeah, I do know about that. That, 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 that. <laughs> um, so, Philip DeFranco, if you're hiring... I am completely caught up. I am completely filled in. <clears throat> so, I am usually 100% caught up on everything that's happening with the news. And yeah, it's, it's tough because it's like, what do you do? Do you have any advice for someone who's feeling so far away from their identity and just in absolute chaos? I don't know how to get back to feeling myself. I'm actually considered being done with social media because I cannot deal. Honestly, you kind of have, like, you kind of already know what I was going to say. I feel like social media can be the thing that isolates you. And it, it's pretty tough because it's also the best place for you to experience, like, the ability to express yourself because it's a platform and it's instant. And before, you know, when I was 16, if you wanted to express yourself, you had to, if, I'll talk about me. So if I wanted to express myself, I would get dressed in like my alternative clothes. 
I would have my alternative hairstyle and I would walk downtown to like run into kids my age or like I would go to the cyber cafe and like play DDR and hope to like run into somebody and I would just like walk everywhere and just like that was how I expressed myself just the only thing the only way to express myself was like a point of contact like you had to run into me but I was trying to be expressive and I would be seen almost like you would see me at the bookstore or you would see me somewhere and now there's very limited opportunities for us to be seen other than our singular platform I'm so exhausted that I'll like run somewhere if I have to leave the house kind of like unprepared my willingness to like get done up I don't know if it was because I was younger or if it was because like it just was more important to me but like I run into you guys downtown with just like my hair up in a bun I'm like <laughs> so it's just like a lot tougher now to be seen be somewhere and like express yourself in that way you know I've read so much stuff that we're the loneliest generation and it's because being in contact online is a false stimulation of us interacting but the interaction isn't there so you really do have to reconnect with how you express yourself without the aid of social media and figuring out what that is like how you are expressing yourself because it's so easy to also like fake who you are online that you can be like oh yeah like I I'm a gamer girl and then you can like be with yourself at night and be like wait I haven't played a video game in like two months what am I doing so in that way you're like how I see it is like I relate to stuff online and then I like live that fantasy for a second in my head and then I am not that way like I'll see beauty gurus and stuff like this is kind of the example I go to I'll see beauty gurus who are amazing at makeup and I'll look at it and I'm like oh I like that I like makeup I'm that way and then I keep scrolling and I'm like I haven't practiced makeup in like a month what am I talking about but in the moment I'm like I'm that way and it's like a false it's like a false like I don't know you're just viewing yourself inaccurately which I feel like is like a misfire you're like it's not quite right and you're sending all these mixed communications to yourself and your brain that you just like are not that way and I think it just like does a toll on you just like it exhausts you because you're misfiring all the time and you're not really like acting on your interests like I am interested in makeup but then I'll get deep into like internet makeup culture and I'm like I'm not this way so it, it's it's really tough what I would suggest doing is just challenging yourself to trying something different whenever I challenge myself to do something different I I immediately feel some sort of sense of just self-worth and like I, I can't always do it or I have to push myself for days to do it like right now I'm in a, a kind of a big old slump and once John catches wind of it it's over <laughs> but um I, I think that social media creates a ton of brain fog and it's pretty hard to navigate but it'll be here when you come back and if you can find things to do without it like when I was in the Poconos I tried to leave my phone at in the car like tried to leave it but then I have to come back to it because I have to check my emails because I'm waiting for like some important emails whatever so that is kind of tough but if you can find your way out of it it's really rewarding but that is hard as well <laughs> It seems like a lot of people are disconnected from their surroundings and not living in the moment nowadays. That's also been something that's been kind of tough for me. I read something 
from the perspective of somebody who is living here abroad and just talking about how like Americans don't interact with their neighbors or each other and I I mean in Philadelphia I'm pretty lucky because we live in homes that are touching and I have a pretty good relationship with my neighbor and when I lived in my apartment I spent every day with my handyman but that is a Philadelphia thing I do feel pretty upset that I'm not connected with more of my neighbors a lot of my younger neighbors I don't connect with at all and like the other night all I wanted to do was like sit on my step and drink a beer because like that's what I used to do with Ryan we would like pull up beach chairs and sit outside for hours and just like watch the traffic and just exist outside of our house and it was nice and sitting by my fucking self on my step knowing that like five of my neighbors are my age just made me feel stupid but some of my neighbors I don't connect with like um one of my neighbors has like a pretty big problem that uh that we have two cars even though two people live in our house and she's our age because the parking is tough in Philadelphia so like that makes me feel weird and then I'm like I guess we'll fight <laughs> I'm like I don't know I, I would much rather connect with my neighbors the last time I really connected with them was Halloween I went to have a beer on my step and give out candy and my other neighbor was across the street and she was like yo I'm like that was it it really sucks um because like my friend Logan lives in Philadelphia but he lives an hour away from me so it would be ridiculous for me to be like do you want to come over for 20 minutes and have a beer and then leave like that would be so fucked up but like that's the interaction I kind of crave you know just like it's after work I've got 45 minutes until I make dinner and go to bed I wish I could interact with somebody like that but a lot of us either have friends online so it's like a whole thing and they have to stay the whole weekend and we're all fucked up so that's like too much interaction and then we had to recover from it like it sucks like I miss Ryan so bad but one of the things I really really miss was like I could text him and we could walk and get coffee together and then come back and just like go our separate ways and then a couple hours later I'd be like do you want to have a beer and then like it was just so so nice to just know someone who lived on my street but I don't know it, it really sucks because like my <laughs> my one neighbor um was robbed like two weeks ago maybe more he was he was like held up at gunpoint so I brought him a case of beer because I heard the story and then he just like went home and closed the door and I was like fuck um, it's not, it wasn't, like, an invitation for me to hang out with him. It was, like, 11 o'clock. I was just kind of being, like, hey, if you need anything, like, if you need anything, I don't know what you're going through. Do you need a flip phone? Like, I don't know. But, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried. And then, like, it's, it's just, like, a sh it's a shame. I'm, like, hi, I want to hang out. <laughs> I don't want to tell you too much about myself. I just want to chill. Like, don't follow me on Instagram. Just, like, let's hang out. Most of my friends interact with me online, and I know most of the things they know about me because I share them online, and I feel like all our interactions online are really shallow. Yes! So, I was, like... I have a couple different ways to explain this, but it's kind of like you share these things online and then if you happen to run into somebody, you have to talk like this. Did you see when I posted? Oh yeah, well this happens. Did you see? Did I already tell you? Did I already tell you? Comes out of my mouth so often because it's me saying, I know you follow me online and I know you saw this, so I'm currently repeating myself, but this is what I want to talk about. So like, did I tell you or did I already tell you is something all the time. So I like, 
I feel bad because I, I do this to Logan and I haven't talked to Logan about this yet, but Logan's a little younger than me. So Logan will like text me throughout the day stuff he's doing. And I want to wait until we hang out to hear about it. Even though he can tell me instantly, I want to wait until we hang out. And like I'll respond all day, but I'm like, I want to wait till we hang out. Then we hang out and we're both just like interrupting each other because we're like, but that's the thing, like, I have, like, a few friends that I would be dying to hang out with, but we just, like, talk every day online. Or we, like, they reply to my story, or I reply to their story, so, like, I've seen their story, Logan just texted me. So, I see their story, and then I'm like, okay. Now I can't, like, ask them about it. I have this one friend. <clears throat> um, and I have this one friend, and the last time I saw him was for, like, South Philly Festival, and I went out there, and it was the first time I saw his house and all of this stuff, and he wants to, like, get into fitness. So I'm always, like, oh man, there's this free yoga event, I should hit him up because I feel very connected to him because we talk every day on Instagram very casually. And then I'm like, is it really, really weird and personal that I'm asking him to like do this yoga, like free yoga in the park with me? Because we talk every day, so we're friends, but I'm like, am I like overstepping my boundary because he's a boy? Am I, is it like weird? But I'm like, but we're fucking friends. We talk, we talk every day. Like, I know what's going on with you. I invited you to, like, these two parties I threw. Um, but I feel like I'm really overstepping a boundary, like, asking him to, like, these things. But then who else would I ask? It's like, that's the perfect friend for it. It's really, really tough. I'm not explaining this well. But yeah, I feel like... When I finally hang out with somebody, I have nothing to offer because we already talked about everything while we were texting, but I also am lonely, so I want to text somebody. It's, like, tough. Yeah, I always feel, I always wait in real life. Literally, when you work in social media, you feel this need to turn off after. I feel like no one relates to me on this, though. That's exactly how I feel so I feel bad because I, I always try to be like a regular ass person when I'm hanging out with my friends and I never try to be like a youtuber <clears throat> so one thing I always feel guilty about and I may have talked about this before is when I'm with my real friends like doing real stuff I don't always take a ton of pictures because I already took a ton of pictures like already today so I'm like cool I'm doing my thing so like I'll feel guilty like oh I'm with Rosie but I didn't take a ton of pictures like I <laughs> I bought Rosie a bunch of fireworks for her birthday um and I didn't take a pic and I didn't take any pictures of us like lighting them off because <clears throat> I'm like oh my god I'm off my phone <laughs> <clears throat> But, like, you can ask them about it. I like to elaborate on my stories. I always do that, for sure. I've What I said is, like, a little nitpicky. Like, I'll, I'll dead up repeat myself. I'm like, I know you saw that story, and I'm telling you all about it. But it's always that, like, pretense. I'm like, oh, did I tell you about? Because they have the option, like, if you are with somebody who's, like, kind of a dick, they have the option to be like, I know. And I'm like, please. I'm just uh, looking through the chat here because there's some stuff I missed. <laughs> Robbie, stop.
I've always wondered, Q, why do you only get tattooed on one side of your body? Um, um, I really like the effect of just this one heart on the side of my body, and I wanted to finish one side before I started on the other, and I would say, like, I don't feel completely finished on this side yet, and my back is not finished at all. But that's kind of why. No, like, real, real reason. It's weird how I don't see social media that way. Crazy to think we all experience the internet differently. For sure. I think that my experience online is definitely, like, hyper, not exaggerated. I don't want to say that I'm exaggerating. But I spend so much time online that whatever I'm feeling is the effects of somebody who spends a ton of time online. Like... I like to think of like Morgan or Valonius as like my coworkers, or like Rianne from Wife Life. I like to think of them as like my coworkers. So I go online and I see what they're doing, or I'll see what like Valonius posted or whatever. But all of that is also accumulative time spent online. I saw somebody say that Twitter is kind of like the Slack for freelancers, and Slack is kind of like a platform where uh, like, co-workers all communicate. So, I spend time online just, like, seeing what my other, like, freelance friends are doing. <clears throat> then I see, like, what trends are happening. I'll see what other YouTubers are posting. I'll see what's happening on Instagram. And then, by that, I've already spent four to five hours on social just doing research or, like, figuring out ideas or just seeing what's happening or, like, staying in the know. And then, you know, three more hours of me tweeting or, like, coming, like, doing stuff on Instagram, stuff like that. And then I also use it, like, recreationally as a person. So my experience on social is of one who is on social media for work. So I'm, like, a little bit, like, damn, work is tough. And then on the other sense, also, like, a regular person on social media. So... My experience is just, like, a little amplified, which is also probably tough for my friends. <clears throat> I find making friends as an adult so difficult. Any tips? I'm stuck in a cycle of being scared to go out alone, but not meeting anyone because I'm too anxious. <sighs> that is kind of, like... I had this thought the other day that it's, like, easier to, like, meet guys than it is to meet friends. And that is, like, a little heartbreaking for me. But it's, like, kind of true. It's pretty tough to meet friends. And then I also feel like if you have coworkers, you, like, want to hang out with them. But you don't want to cross the, like, coworker friend line because then your work suffers. Like, when I worked at the salon... All of us were also fucking friends. So work and then friendship and all of, and then like drama, like became very, 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 very thinly veiled, which made working together like really tough because you're like, oh, I'm sensitive about how you're treating me at work, but we're supposed to hang out later. So even that, I'm like, I don't want to be friends with like people at work either. Not Valonius and Morgan, who I just called my coworkers, but like that's tough. Meeting people is is just like pretty difficult. Um, I feel like I feel really, really lucky that I met Rosie and that we really get along. But Rosie's enthusiasm to hang out also really helps, and it has taught me a lot as well. Because Rosie will hit me up and she'll be like, there's a movie I want to see. And I think I was telling this to Logan, like, sometimes I do not want to see the fucking movie that she has, like, sent me. But I'll go because 
I think about, like, I think about how much personal choice has, like, really, like, taken over our lives. And I try to bring myself back to a time where you kind of just did what your friends wanted to do, and then sometimes it's your turn to decide. Um, <clears throat> with, like, I don't know, Netflix and YouTube and stuff, you can really absolutely cater your life to down to the, like, ultra specification of what you like only. And that's really tough to put on a second person. So we want to make friends, but our entire lives are so personally sculpted around us. And, like, even our interactions online are completely 100% dedicated to us and our personality and the signals that we set off to our algorithms that, like, we don't even under, we don't even know it's happening, but we are only spending time in our exact interest. And, like I, like, casually mentioned earlier that Rosie and I don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, it's pretty interesting because I kind of, like, only know that from, like, witnessing her. But I think it's only noticeable to me because of how much my life is absolutely catered to only what I like. So it's really nice to spend time with someone and just do whatever the fuck they want to do. And just know it'll come around to you when it's time to do what you want to do if you ask them. Like, I know that I can go to an event with Rosie and it's like really just like 100% the ball is in her court, but I know I'll have fun because I'm just like under her umbrella of like, I'm taking you to hang out. So I try to think about that. I try to like think about, <clears throat> sorry, I try to think about doing stuff that I don't necessarily want to do or love to do. And it, I might enjoy it, but Honestly, just getting out of the house and doing something is just what I want to do. So that can be really, really tough when you're trying to make friends because you might witness someone and be like, oh, they like to do this thing. I don't like to do this thing. Well, you can meet in the middle. Like Rosie and I see a ton of movies together and I don't even look them up. Like she'll send me a movie. I don't click on it. I don't look it up. I just decide to go and like that's it so I think having somebody to go to things with you is like it's a great excuse like just find anybody who you interact with and be like do you want to see this movie with me or like there's this event like and like start it from there I guess I don't know it like with Rosie, I was like, oh, she's not vegan. Like, she's not going to hang out with me. And literally, it, like, doesn't phase her at all, like, one bit. Like, she could not be bothered by the fact that I'm not vegan. We just, like, go somewhere we can both eat. Like, it's so chill. So, it, it's really nice to just, like, get along with somebody. And it's not, like, one million percent catered to your interests. Which is, like, something that, you know, we're exposed to all the time it's like our natural design now i've made your anxiety but honestly a night to experience one new thing can be so worthwhile it it's it's really tough because you how do i say this like we become anxious Sometimes, you know, this is not, this is talking about um, the emotion anxiety and not the diagnosis anxiety. But we can become anxious or nervous about things that we don't experience a lot or we're unfamiliar with. And we, for me, I'm really out of practice with a lot of stuff. And I get really nervous to be in groups and stuff because I haven't been in a big group since, what, high school? Like, it makes me... It makes me, like, I feel out of practice. I feel nervous. So I try to challenge myself and I try to, like, not let the anxiety in. Which, you know, we can't all do that. I'm not speaking for everybody. But I do try to, like, challenge it right away and, like, not let it come in. Oh, 
Um, so we, so our, our Bronco was totaled and it's a total loss. And it was kind of tough because some of the comments on the video are like, you can still fix it. My dad could fix it. And I'm like, I'm telling you it's done. So our Bronco is a total loss. So John's dad was letting us borrow his minivan in the meantime because we have a work truck, John's work truck. And then we had the Bronco that was our like passenger vehicle. <clears throat> so John's dad has lent us his minivan which is automatic so I can drive it. So we've been in possession of this minivan and I have not driven a car in like, I think I, I got rid of my Monte Carlo when I was 21. And I've driven like a handful of times since then. Like if I go home, like, maybe I'll drive my grandmom's car. Like, very minimal. So, I've been driving and it's been so, so hard. It's been so unbelievably scary. And I joke that I'm not a good driver, but <clears throat> I'm driving and at the same time, I'm like zoning out and telling myself I'm not a good driver. And I don't know where it comes from. And it's it's really, really scary. It's really hard to navigate. So I'm like, I can't even have the radio on unless I'm like, I've been driving for a while and feel more comfortable. But it's like this weird out of body experience when I'm driving. I'm like viewing myself driving and I'm like, I'm not good at this. Something bad is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. So I got on the highway one time and I wasn't driving fast enough so like cars were beeping at me and stuff and I was just like it's it's so easy for me to just die right now and it, it was like very 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 overwhelmingly scary um so I'm going to apply more lipstick But I've been telling myself there's a lot of opportunities for me if I can drive better because then I can start driving to Allentown and start getting my tattoo removal. Um, but I have to take the highway to go to Allentown because it's about a two hour drive. Um, and there's like thrift stores across the bridge in New Jersey that um, like Logan wants to go to. And I was like, I'm not ready to drive over the bridge. But <clears throat> I want to drive, I want to start driving more so I can feel more comfortable. But I can tell you, like, driving has been one of the most scary feelings. And it's really weird because I was never afraid of driving before. I started driving when I was 16 and I could, I could not give a fuck about driving. I was just driving, just like changing CDs and shit, driving, like slamming on my brakes, going really fast, weaving in and out of traffic, just like lived in Texas, like eight lane highway. I was like, see you later, backing up into spots and shit. And just like now all of a sudden, I'm just like, I can't do this. And then I can't. I'm like a total dummy now. It's pretty weird. I'm gonna read the chat. I'm in Allentown. You're lucky. I have no interest in driving. I really don't understand. I really understand the anxiety around it. Yeah, I kind of thought I would never ever have to drive ever again. And just like, I feel completely, I love getting on a bus and just sitting down and like not worrying about anything going on. <clears throat> Driving in Philadelphia has been absolutely insane. People are like swinging open doors. People are running red lights. People, it's just like insane driving. And the driving I would say is a lot worse than when I was 16. You know, just pe the drivers are a lot crazier. So just driving in Philadelphia, I don't know. And then like a cop pulls up behind you and you're like, I'm gonna get pulled over. And you're like, I didn't do anything wrong, but. So I just like the whole experience is like so crazy to me. 
and it, it's it's really really tough <laughs> a couple years ago i didn't mean to start that with a laugh john's dad had a seizure and i was driving him to all the things he needed to like be at like go grocery shopping or go to the doctor or whatever and he would still have me get out so he could parallel park <laughs> so To be honest, why I don't go into the city driving if I can avoid it, and I live two minutes away. Honestly, like, I, my mind is geared around public transportation and how to get somewhere on public. And being able to drive, it's not my first instinct anymore. And even the other day, I was getting ready to meet Logan, and John was like, why don't you drive? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to. But then there's also a lot of opportunity if I drive, like I can drive to a dead mall, which is what I like, just want to do only. And I can drive to New Jersey and I can drive to different things and like supplement my income, income, my content that way. <clears throat> but driving has been really, really, really stressful. And I have like weird like out of body experiences experiences while I'm doing it and I know how that sounds but I'm like zoning in and out I'm like on the highway and I'm like I have to go faster but in a second I could just die I'm 22 and I still don't like driving but I live in Texas so you have to drive to get anywhere yes And I'm also driving like a minivan, so I feel like that might be just like not my practice because I was driving a Monte Carlo before I stopped driving. But I learned how to drive on a Jeep Cherokee, so I, I just don't really know. Did you ever try to learn stick? I bought one last year and it wasn't as difficult as I expected. Um, I learned how to drive stick, but I learned how to drive stick on an 82 Ford Bronco, so there's just like... With me, there was a lot of nuance, like the Bronco doesn't start in first gear, it starts in second gear, and just like, there was a lot of feeling things out, and just like, it was a giant truck, I don't, I just like, wasn't super comfortable, like, if I was in a car, I can drive stick, like, I believe in myself in that capacity, if I was in a newer vehicle as well, like, I don't want to say that like out loud, but it was... It was a combination of it being the Bronco and just the the car being pretty old, so just like the dynamics of it were a bit different. I go to Philly from Allentown where I live all the time. If you ever need a ride or lunch suggestions or whatever, hit me up. Yes. Maybe you have trauma from the crash. I was thinking that, <clears throat> um, I was thinking that I probably did, and after I got hit by that car, I couldn't ride my bike or ride in a car for, like, a couple months. So I don't know, pro probably, honestly. Sorry, I'm reading the chat right now. Do you want to drive or would you rather not to? I I like the I like the options that come with driving. I mean, my my heart is that I wish that the United States had more rapid transit. Like, that's where my heart is. That's, like, where my attention is. And that's, like, where I would want my money to go into because that's what I believe in. And it's, like, pretty... <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. It's, like, pretty disheartening that a lot of the infrastructure in America is based around driving to 
supplement the big players who were available then, like Ford and Goodyear, who made driving the preferred mode of transit in the United States instead of rapid transit. Like, I'll lust over other countries that have great public transportation, and like, that's what I would prefer. But in Pennsylvania, there's just so many places you can't go without a vehicle that I feel like I've really limited myself to Philadelphia. And sometimes it can feel like I'm on the Truman Show, like I'm just on this island in Philadelphia and there's nowhere I can go without someone taking me there. And I would say my grandmother also feels this the hardest. One, she wants me to move home all the time. And two, she wants me to visit more often. And, like, I didn't go home for her birthday, and, like, I saw her, and, like, all her grays have just, like, grown in, and she's like, I, I like it like this, and I'm like, I know that you don't, I know you're just being nice. So, I think if I drove, I would be able to see her more often. I already hit up my brother and asked him if he wanted to go back to school shopping, so, like, I can take him now that I have a car. But there's so much of me that doesn't want to drive, like, I want to rely on public transit. And it's a lot more freeing because, one, like, if I got into a car accident, like, that's insane. And even if you're the best driver, like, all the car accidents I've been in with John weren't his fault, you know? <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, I'm just gonna drink water for one second. We should figure out how to teleport. Yes. Your main hustle for cash flow. What do you do for work? Um, I do YouTube full time for work. I wouldn't call it a hustle, <laughs> and I wouldn't call it cash flow. What color are you going to dye your hair next? So I saw that this, um, let me get his name exactly right, because I know what I call him in my head, but let me get his exact YouTube name right, because <laughs> Brando is not his name. So Brad, Brad Ma Mondo. Not Brando. Brad Mondo is looking for YouTubers to collaborate with for his next video to do their hair. Three years ago, he had this big contest where you could enter it. Um, and I was going to enter it. And someone at my salon at the time was like, do not. Because they were working on like a hair project with me for like a couple months. And they didn't want anyone to like interrupt it. <clears throat> so... I DM'd him today because he's looking for another influencer to work with. Um, I hope he says yes, like that would be cool. But there's 400 replies on his post, so he might not notice me. Let me see. A lot of people want him to collab with Jenna Marbles. So if you go to this guy, Brad... Hmm, Brad Mondo? Is that better? No. Well, if you go to Brad Mondo and see my reply, if you could give it a little like, maybe he'll notice it. Or if you want to tag me so he'll notice me. Because I DM'd him and I was like, oh, I only live like two hours away and I'm dying to go to New York for a reason. So that would be really fun. Because I like, I have desires with what I want to do with my hair. But I want like someone to bounce ideas off of because that's how I'm used to like planning my hair. Me to be like, I like this, this, and this, and this. And someone be like, oh, this haircut would be all of those things.
he would love to do your hair since you're usually so open-minded. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if he notices me. No, I am no longer working as a hairstylist. Um, I am doing limited appointments for people I know or can vet. So if you wanted your hair done by me, you can privately contact me in a way where I can figure out who you are and vet you and you're not like traveling in because I would feel really guilty. But no, I'm not a shampoo girl anymore. I mean, what I want to do on YouTube and what I want to do on social media and what I've always wanted to do, like that opportunity is here and it's now. And the quality of my life was never going to be like stress-free or just like there doing both. And I had talked about online that one day I would have to choose. And I thought I was going to choose salon. And I think that the content I made in that time, like, really doesn't represent me well. It wasn't something I was proud of making. But being on YouTube and like working for myself and knowing that I'm doing something creative and like nobody puts me down and nobody talks down to me and nobody if someone misunderstands me it's just because that is the way the internet goes it's not because of something I'm miscommunicating or anything like that so I mean I'm really grateful to be on YouTube and this is where my heart is and you know it wasn't an easy decision to make or a place to be put in but this is what I'm happy doing like I learned I learned a lifelong skill and I'll always have that and I'll always have my experience and you know I have a lot of confidence in my ability and I think I learned a lot and I think that I'm in a place where I can do hair that I want to do. You know, if somebody asks me, I can do my grandmom's hair. You know, if I'm taking care of a child, I could do its hair. I could do my friend's hair and makeup. And that's what makes me happy. Like learning a lifelong skill. And, you know, if I collab with Brad, like that's something that we have in common. And it's something like you never forget like you never forget your salon life but they tell you from the beginning it's not for everybody and then maybe that's 100 percent true i still absolutely follow all of the hair accounts that i've always followed and i have you know friends who are crushing it in hair world and it's so sick and i'll always have that skill and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm trying a diet pizza for the first time. Yes. I saw some comments that were like sad that I'm not making hair content anymore and it's definitely not a reflection of like not working in the salon anymore it's definitely just liking having long brown hair and it's when you work in a salon it's like working in a restaurant or like working at McDonald's like you get there and you're like oh I'm suddenly hungry funny how I'm suddenly hungry Working in the salon was the same way. I would be like, I want bangs. I want a haircut. I want blue hair. I want brown hair. Shorter. Longer. And now that I'm not there, I'm just like, oh, I like having long brown hair. <laughs> so that's kind of just like the decrease in the hair content, but it's not because it's not my interest anymore. 
<clears throat> have you tried the impossible whopper i haven't i want to i saw that there was drama in like new york state that they got their like um pop kit for all of their impossible stuff and they put it out and they were just selling regular meat <laughs> um so you know maybe i'll go somewhere a slow-paced burger king where they might not mess it up but i do want to try it hopefully i'm like one of the first people to try it so i can make a vlog about it i had the impossible burger at white castle though and i liked it Have you noticed the effects of your curse going away recently? I hope so. Things have been chill, and I think the outlook, I think just the perspective that it gave me really cheered me up. Like, it was really nice to spend time in Philadelphia and, like, spend time, like, in my community. And I think any kind of perspective I can get on my parents is always kind of nice like i don't know like i always just want a little bit of understanding on them like i don't have a relationship with my dad at all and not really with my mom anymore either and even though that's what's best for my life it still leaves like a lot of longing and stuff so if i can just like put myself in their perspective a little bit that's always nice like I had a lot of fun doing that I know in the Poconos my mom stayed at a cabin in Shawnee Pennsylvania and she carved her and my dad's initials in the cabin um <laughs> we didn't go to see it while I was in the Poconos but I did think about it and stuff like that I'm like I'd love to see it but then as an adult, like, I also understand, like, breakups and relationships and things not working out. And you have to get older to put yourself in your parents' shoes. Now I'm much older than my parents ever were when they were together. But, I mean, I don't know what it's like to have a kid in the mix. That always kind of, like, disenchants me a little bit. I'm, like, dead, really. But in that... It was still like a it was still like a fun experience. It was still really cool. Are you excited for the new Animal Crossing game on the Switch? So I actually don't have a Switch. I'm kind of waiting for like a good opportunity to buy it so I think next March that will probably be why I buy it although I really I feel sad because I think the switch is going to replace the Nintendo DS and I really like my Nintendo DS so I'm like I wish I could just play it on my DS like I like I like the structure of the DS I like that it closes I like taking it with me I like the feel so I'm excited I think the premise of the new Animal Crossing is going to be a lot more fun but I'm looking in the chat you look good with this hair thank you <clears throat> will there be more igtv yes i'm actually working with a local company right now to for my next video so i'm just waiting for all of that to come together my my igtv is pretty interesting like it gets recommended to a lot of people so there's always a ton of locals in the comments and now like, rude comments used to and can still just, like, ruin my day. 
But now I'm at a point where some of these comments are just so crazy that the people, it makes the people look bad. So I'm glad to be at least stepping into that mindset. Some of the comments on my videos are like, oh, she really thinks she invented tucking in a shirt. And I'm like, no, I don't. This is a video of someone getting ready. This isn't me inventing anything. It's really wild. I have one video where I'm actually wearing this shirt and I'm wearing a bodysuit underneath it because the sleeves go down really low. Like you have to wear something underneath this shirt. You can't just have this shirt on. And everyone's like, how does she pee? And I'm like, a lot of people wear bodysuits. <laughs> this is crazy. I didn't invent bodysuits. I think one of my favorite things about your videos is they are such good topic starters. I had so many conversations on long rides about the ABBA letter. Well, that's awesome. It's like, I wish I could... I wish there was just one word for all my interests, but I just love, like, civility. I just love, like, human nature in a way. And the ABBA letter was such a, like, great way to dive into that. It doesn't fit with any of my content, but it's just, like, so good. Sometimes I'm like, I wish someone else who's better at this could talk about it, but I just gotta believe in myself. IG is something else. Yeah, I... It's weird. I, I really like Instagram. And, like, making Instagram TV videos has, like, really, like, invigorated a part of me because I can put fashion videos on there, which is what I really, I really like doing. And because they're on IGTV, the expectation isn't super high. Like, fashion on YouTube, like, has to be good. But on Instagram TV, the screen is this big, so, like, and the attention span on Instagram is much, much, much smaller. So the production can be in my bedroom, like, pretty chill. So with that, I'm able to make, like, outfit of the day videos that are, like, pretty fun and interesting and I'm proud to put out and that, like, I'm, I like, I'm editing them and I, I like them. <laughs> but, yeah, also, like, Kim Kardashian is on Instagram, so, like, some people's perspectives are just a little challenged on there, I think, because there's, like, a ton of craft videos, so people will watch my video, and they're like, when is she gonna teach me something? And I'm like, I'm, I'm not. I, you can copy me. That can be the thing I teach you. But I... I I really like being able to make fashion videos on Instagram. Caitlin says, love your channel, heart, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. I, I will try my best. I'm dying about the pee anger. <laughs> Sometimes I delete them because the thing about Instagram, it's like, it's like when your gutters get clogged. Like, someone will be like, how does she pee? And then people will be like, I know, right? And it like, some, so sometimes I just delete them. Other times I don't know they happen because they'll like happen overnight in like Russia or whatever. As someone who studied anthropology, you discuss weird human stuff well enough for me. I'm glad. A compliment. When is she gonna teach me something? I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I posted a- I posted a video where I'm wearing- I ordered this, uh, Evangelion t-shirt, and for some reason it's really long. It's a very weird long shirt, but it has a print on the back, so I didn't want to crop it in case- I don't know, like- I didn't, if there was only a graphic on the front, I would totally crop it, but I felt weird about cropping it and cutting the graphic on the back in half. So I styled it three ways, and like two of the ways I styled it was by tucking it into a shirt. 
And a bunch of the comments are like, wow, she just discovered tucking in a shirt. I'm like, bro, I'm just styling a long shirt. That's how, how else should I style a long shirt that you haven't seen before? Like add strings to it and shit. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, yeah, dude. I love IGTV videos. I need to take more fashion risks. Me too. Wow, I caught a live stream. You are here. But I've been streaming for two hours, so she's winding down. Bedazzle your shirts. Been thinking about it. I'm um, getting a video ready for um, like a, I guess it's like a lookbook, but a little different. And it's all pieces I just thrifted this week or last week. So I'm pretty excited for that. With thrifts, I like to, like the trend is to modify things you get at the thrift store. But I also really like when things fit really weird. So like not even modify them, just wear them as they are and it fits really weird. So I've been trying to like think of ways to alter clothing to make them like trendy and wearable. But also like accommodate me wanting to dress weird. Only crop the front like a mullet. Me. What is it? Like, uh, shirt tails? <laughs> Have you watched Stranger Things 3 yet? Yes. Do you plan on streaming Roller Coaster Tycoon again? Every, like, once a month, I will message Robbie and be like, I want to make a Twitch! And he's like, do it! And then I don't. And now Ninja's not on there, so I'm like, do I have it? I'm kidding. I, I bought those DDR pads so I could start streaming DDR on Twitch and they both broke. But apparently there is there are DDR pads that have just a USB port. So you can plug it into your computer and play emulated versions of DDR through there. So if Amazon ever gives me my refund, I think that's the DDR pad I'm going to buy. I just need to have, like, have Robbie over for dinner to like help me set it up. Please stream Roller Coaster Tycoon. I want to do that and I want to do Mall Tycoon. So let me know what kind of videos you uh, want to see. And I'll answer a couple more questions like that and we'll chill this out. We'll, uh, we'll ease into the conclusion. But thank you guys so much for coming here and hanging out with me via live stream. <clears throat> I know I've talked before on this channel that, like, some people really didn't like that I was doing live streams. Like, I was losing a lot of subscribers doing uh, a lot of live streams. But I did feel pretty disconnected from you guys, having them a lot and then stopping. So this has been a really chill night. Um, the questions have been really cool and it's been really nice to just like come up here and just like candidly just like express what I've been going through, how I've been feeling, kind of just like if my mind was a clogged gutter, it's been nice to just like explain why I've been feeling like a little blocked creatively and why maybe you haven't seen some of my videos. <clears throat> I've been trying to be more well-rounded and not just make tattoo videos. If you follow my good friend Valonius, he's been going through the same thing where YouTube doesn't want us to be making a ton of tattooed content. And I took all my body modification, my hard body modification videos off of my channel. I've been thinking of making them available for my channel members, which is an option that has now been made available on my channel. It was in beta testing before, and now it has been given to my channel, which is great for members. Um, <clears throat> so there has been a like just a shift that has to happen on my channel because of the new kind of way that YouTube wants to moderate the content that's on their channel. I feel like they were really coming after Valonius because they said no content about forked tongues. I was like, my dude. Um, so it's been 
it's been pretty cool making content outside of that like tattoo thing. It's always going to hurt your videos if your audience doesn't watch your videos. And I know I have a lot of subscribers who came for tattooed content or came from my Inked Magazine video and stuff like that. So that's always going to be tough to convince those viewers that my other content is worth viewing. <clears throat> I feel like it's like in Inked Magazine or like other um, tattoo magazines, they'll always have a bunch of lifestyle stuff with their tattooed content. So I always feel like I'm like, I'm the lifestyle stuff. I have the tattoos, but I'm the articles. Don't you want to read the articles? They're like, no, not really. But <clears throat> it's been really nice to come on here and have a live stream and kind of just like stream of conscious, just like tell you how I feel and like what's been going on and hang out with you guys. And, you know, I always recognize a ton of you guys. What can we do to help support your new content you're putting out? Um, so I've been, I created a Patreon and I haven't done anything on it yet. I was thinking of having different tiers, like maybe a tier where if you're like interested in social media or you're trying to start a YouTube channel, you can talk to me every month and I can give you advice um, <clears throat> for stuff like that. I was thinking of having that. I, um, I think like a Patreon might be where I go. I want to have merch. I'm testing out Teespring right now. And I'm really grateful for the people who have ordered from my merch shop. There's a couple pieces of merch that I want to make that Teespring doesn't offer. Like a ringer tee I really want to make. I really want to make joggers or like sweatpants that have my like emblem on them and stuff like that. I've been working with designs and things like that in the background. So all of that stuff is happening. It's kind of just like finding exactly what I want and what I think you guys want. And, like, never, like, asking you for too much. <clears throat> so, you can always follow me on Twitter. That's kind of where I test or, like, feel out a lot of my ideas. You guys were pretty helpful with my merch drop on there. And I think if I can figure out, um... I'd be careful managing your perks on Patreon so you don't have to put too much energy into specific advice in case a lot of people ask for it. For sure. That's really good. That's why I've been like a little hesitant on Patreon. <clears throat> but you can always follow me on Twitter. That is where I kind of just like feel out a lot of stuff and that's where I would announce anything. Same with my Instagram. Not to give you advice to take a social media break and then be like, well, follow me on social. But that is where a lot of that information, if you're wanting to support me directly, that's where that goes. But ultimately, the best way to support my channel is to give videos a chance um, to share them. If you ever hit the share button on any of my videos, it counts almost as a like in the algorithm so you can like my videos but you can also share them you can share them on your facebook or with your friends directly it's kind of just like like teach amanda fish it's kind of like if you share my channel it's a lot stronger and it creates a bond with like your friends or someone you're recommending it to so that's also like a very organic way to support my channel and it's free like when we got in the car accident a lot of you guys you know you guys are really great to me you wanted me to kind of crowdfund for fixing the bronco and i told you guys that the best way like i didn't want to accept any money just like share my videos if you like them and that's the best way to support the channel i am also thinking about putting five fact friday as a member tier on my youtube but uh i talked to my partner manager about that youtube will assign you partner managers that check in with you like every six weeks 
So, um, she thought that was a pretty good idea. Because a lot of you guys want Five Fact Friday, but I did feel like Five Fact Friday was starting to get pretty personal. And it would be nice to, like, have almost, like, uh, some protection or, like, curtains or something around that to keep it, a, like, a little more special. But, um, Robbie also runs my Discord, um, which is really great of him. And you guys on my Discord are so sick. <clears throat> so that is those are the ways to support me and the most free way to support me is like you know if I make something you really like you know to post about it or when I roll out merch you know I'd love to give you guys something tangible that you can wear I'm somebody like I have a ton of like band t-shirts and I feel like merch is the like thing that makes me not eco-friendly like not um what is it like <clears throat> like not fashion friendly because I buy so much merch but um oh people saying they would pay for five pack friday is really chill that's something she wants me to roll out, and that's something I've been really into as well. But that's the reason you haven't seen Five Fact Friday. I just felt like it was getting really personal. Um, but yeah, I, I can't thank you guys enough. And all the support that you show me, and the like leniency you give to my newer content. And how you've supported the channel and, like, not let it die when I'm trying something new has been really amazing. Um, so just big, big ups. I try not to spread myself too thin, which is why you haven't seen me test a podcast or stream on Twitch or post anything on my firework. <clears throat> Getting a little choked up over here. But, um... To be a channel member, you will see on my main page almost where the subscribe button would be. It might not be available in every country. Firework is like TikTok, but it's longer. It's like 30 seconds. I'm not, I haven't posted a single thing on it ever yet. I just mean it's like one of those things. Like I wanted to make a TikTok and I'm like, well, what if I'm not funny or what if I can't, what if I run out of ideas? What are the perks of being a channel member versus Patreon? Well, I don't have... I've signed up for Patreon, but I don't technically have a Patreon that's available yet. But I was thinking if I have a Patreon, I would offer more, like, advice-based stuff. Like, thing that things that are valuable. Like, helping you grow your Instagram or, like, understanding YouTube analytics or something like that. Not being funny seems to, <laughs> not being funny doesn't seem to have stopped like 80% of Instagram and TikTok comedians. I just want a late night show. I just want to be on MTV. Are we watching uh, Tana Turns 21? Robbie? Um, but yes. <clears throat> Getting completely sentimental. Thank you guys so much. <sighs> I feel I feel a lot better after coming on live. I felt really guilty that I haven't made any videos this week or put out any videos for you guys to to watch. But <laughs> Tana Turns Twenty One isn't horrible. I just wish they'd let her edit it. It's MTV editing it that feels inorganic but I love it. Um, and I saw some people talk about my second channel. 
I think I'm going to be vlogging this weekend. So that'll be cool. And I think I'm going to put episode one of Cheesesteak Tour on my second channel. Just so you guys can get a feel for it. But um, I want to put out at least one more good episode of Cheesesteak Tour on my main. Before I show you the pilot. Because it like I don't want you guys to think that's the second episode. More than it's like the test episode where I just like ate a sandwich in the wind. And the audio is terrible. But then I bought a microphone, so now it's better. <laughs> Why weren't you invited to the wedding? I have two subscribers. <laughs> Get all your friends to subscribe because when I hit 200,000 subscribers, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to go out to a karaoke bar with Logan and whoever else we invite. And I'm going to li live stream the whole thing. I'll probably have to live stream it on Instagram live because we'll be singing like copyrighted music. But it might not be copyrighted. It might be that weird like karaoke like piano music where it's like boom 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 boom. And it's like not real music. But um um you have at least three subscribers. I'm crying. So get your auntie on board if you want the two hundred thousand subscriber special which will be at the karaoke spot and logan will be there and i'll invite robbie and uh rosie will show up because she's like dfw but usually it's just background music at one point is focusing so much on analytics help hinder growth i think i'm at that point I spend, I go to um, every YouTube class that's offered in my area. So I do a lot of internal, like, research, like, one-on-one -on -one with YouTube. And it can put you in a really good place where you understand your impact. But then you can also feel defeated by it and not just feel grateful that, anyone gives a shit that you even get like two views <laughs> but I would also say that in those classes that I'm invited to every single time I'm the smallest creator there my partner manager really 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 hooks it up and really does like push to have me as a pretty small creator put into these classes where I'm with people who have millions of subscribers I was in a class once with the dude who records being on roller coasters like that's crazy <laughs> He was like, I get invited to the parks. I get my own ride. I was like, oh my god. So, it, it can challenge you. But it's also good to know. So, like, I always feel like I, I'm fulfilled. Or, like, at least, I said it good, like, four seconds ago. Um, it's a give and take. Instagram takes down streams for copyrighted music sometimes. I've experienced that as a private account with under 100 followers. Yeah, I had I had the cure on one time in one of my IGTV videos and it got removed. But then I have Bombay Bicycle Club in like all of my videos and they've never been taken down. So it, I don't know. At 300,000 subs, can we have you dance to the Wii home screen music? I would... I would fucking do it in my Asuka bathing suit for 300,000 subs. 300,000 subs is like, I don't know. I feel like I, I've made it. <laughs> Enjoying the weather in West Philly. Oh, I love West Philly so much. I wish I was at that Aldi right now. I like your pegboard. Thank you. Who else is Team Levi? fan service or best boy I just have like tattoo numbing gel right here am I alright what are you waiting for you need to get those 100k more subs I know I have some really sick collabs that are coming out that I think will introduce a lot more people to my channel 
finding out that my channel's been like shadow banned for having all that body mod stuff on my channel was like kind of disappointing that like I did it to myself, you know? But um, my partner manager said that like everything looks good now. So I think more people being exposed to my channel is just like what would be the best thing for it. So I'm always excited about that. And if you ever like find a creator that you think I could collab with, like it doesn't matter if they're like very like smaller than me or something like that. That's not something I care about. Like we just have to vibe. Like Valonius and I get along so well. We were planning a collab and then we just ended up screen sharing on Skype and just like watching a movie together and then like we got nothing done. <laughs> Why does being a YouTube creator involve all this complicated secretive mess? Um, the other YouTubers that I'm working with in my collab right now just have... They have like a whole team and a whole schedule so once it's out i would love to talk about it but for them like they just have like a really sick team and like a well-oiled machine that like <laughs> i get jealous of and like love getting swept up in whenever we like chat um so it's just like a part you know it's just like type a it's just like i should be that way But, uh... When you originally started your channel, how many subs were your goal? Did you even think you would reach as many as you have now? Um, no. I started my YouTube channel, like, I didn't even know... I didn't really know that YouTube could be what it is or what it even turned into. Um, so I'm really just happy with how everything turned out. And I don't, I honestly, I, I don't think I could recreate it. Or I don't think, I don't know. It's just crazy. I never, ever, ever had this in mind. I just, I loved being on Tumblr so, so much. And YouTube is just a way better fit. This is very cozy. Oh good, I'm glad you like it in here. When I turn on this light, it gets real, but I don't know how it'll affect. What do you know about that? I was thinking about just printing the entirety of my Tumblr and just turning it into a book. Because I'm not active on Tumblr anymore. Is this light cool? It's like a seashell. I, um, <laughs> my old roommate in my old, old house left it in my room, so I got to keep it. I've seen it for sale on, like, antiques, and I think it's worth money. Not a lot, like, 60 bucks, but... How does being pushed away from the content you originally passionate about affect your ability to make engaging content? Is it easy to change course? I would say it's tough because I wish my old content still got to like exist and like be a part of my image and it wasn't easy for me to private those videos. I felt pretty guilty about it. Um a part of my audience who really enjoyed that content but I think that that is the new nature of YouTube people want you to keep talking about the same thing I study a lot up on the like whole graveyard girl phenomenon because I do feel some parallels with her but I think just if you make new stuff 
and you're not shadow banned. New people will come in and see your content and maybe they will love you all the same and people who have always been here will like you too. It's tough because all of a sudden I'm like, I have to do something completely new. Like, what if I'm not good at it? But I don't know. I feel happy about the stuff I make and since I always wanted to be online, it's good. I try to talk a little bit less about myself as of late and that's tough because I would love to film everything and talk about everything and even tonight I've been using my friends names very specifically and sometimes I I don't always feel comfortable doing that so that's kind of just me being a little bit more protective whereas my tumblr I would literally say everything and then all of that energy got put into my YouTube so being able to share everything was something I I think I liked and I liked doing but I like protecting myself more and that's just from being online for a while just read in the chat hundred million percent cozier Tattoo Talk Tuesday isn't dead. I actually have two, I have three Tattoo Talk Tuesdays currently in the works. One of them is going to be so super exciting. I think it's going to be really good. I contacted my partner manager about it too. I was like, hey, I started making this video before like all the new things on YouTube went into effect and like I don't want to get in trouble for this video. Like how can I make it advertiser friendly? So a little bit, I would say the video was already on the track that she recommended. I just feel more confident about it that it will be green lighted and go through and not be demonetized. Um, but that one's super excited. Uh, Logan is helping me film that one right now and it's going to be really, really good. Why did you private a lot of videos? What's wrong with them? They just, they just now violate YouTube's terms of service, but they didn't at the time of me posting them. So it's better for them to not be visible on my channel because then it just makes my channel look like unsavory. Whereas like, that's not who I am at all. Like I'm not like, I'm not that YouTuber. Like, I'm not trying to create content that's controversial ever. So I would just rather it be privated than be put into a category of YouTubers who are making, like, mature content because I don't think that's what I'm making. Like, I want my videos to be able to be viewed comfortably by a 16-year-old as well as, like, a 45-year-old. Like, so I don't want to have videos on my channel that put me into a mature rating. private um so scarification unfortunately well some of my earlobe reconstruction are private because i think that one's really helpful to people it's demonetized i believe but videos like that like i had a video where john removed the stitches out of my ear like that's not a hill i want to die on so i just got rid of that How annoying is it that you can't just make what you want to make? It's tough. Like, um, I'm not going to be, I'm trying to curse a lot less in my videos, which I mean, being from Philly and I don't know, just being who I am, like I kind of curse a lot. So that's kind of tough. And yeah, I don't get to make like certain videos anymore. I also don't like seeing it happening to my friends. I think Morgan's been having a really hard time on YouTube. So that affects me almost equally like seeing my friends not be able to make videos like really upsets me i turn the light on 
I thought the vibe was right. Can you still host those videos on a blog instead? YouTube is the host. Like, YouTube is the, the person who provides the, like, video viewing. I guess I could put them on Vimeo, but someone told me that you have to pay to be on Vimeo. My husband just puts one pants on my cat. The things you had to cut for me helping with your video. Just like some stuff. Just like our chats. Yeah, Morgan Joyce is a creator on YouTube and I saw that she's been tweeting that she's like locked out of her channel. I have no idea what that means. Um, I'm pretty nervous for her. But, um, that is going to be it for me tonight. But for me, it's almost 10 o'clock and I haven't eaten yet. So I'm going to do that before, I mean, honestly, I hope I fall asleep tonight because I've been just not able to sleep. So thank you guys so much for coming to the stream and talking with me and hearing how you can help out my channel and just hearing what's going on. I hope I offered you some insight as well. And thank you guys as always for coming to the stream. If you like them, if you hate them, um, if you missed any part of this, I will put this stream available to view in its entirety after a few hours. It just has to process and that will be available for you guys if you missed any part of it. And I love you dearly. Thank you for everybody who participated in the super chat. Gabrielle, Michaela, Kaylin, you're the real ones. If you want to buy any of my merch, it is generally linked underneath all of my videos and it is linked recently in my Twitter. If you can't find it, tweet me. I will link you to it as well. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Always helps me out. And let your friends know if you like Quicken, if you like small creators. We all have to start somewhere, and it generally is always by word of mouth. So thank you so, so, so much. And uh, I love you. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week.